having new ideas is never a problem for me. My problem is trying to filter out all the ideas I have and work on one thing. I actually come from a fine art background. I have a degree in sculpture. In the late 90s, I got involved into doing mosaics. It was the actual practice of it. It was actually finding myself in a zone which was really good for my mental state because I had always had a lot of problems. The thing about craft is that you get lost in the process of it. As soon as I did it, I realized how much I loved it. Currently, I'm the first ever visual artist for the Shakespeare's Birthplace Trust. I think it's great that they're using visual arts now to try and draw people in, so I've been working on that for the last year. I think that craft and art is that enabler that enables you to start dialogue. I got involved in the whole death row thing because I picked up a big issue, and in the back of it, it had an advert that said, could you befriend someone on death row? And I thought, well, yeah, I could. So in 2007, I was commissioned to make the Tiki Love Truck. And at the same time that I got that commission, I found that a pen pal that I was writing to, John Joe Amador, was going to be executed. I just couldn't disconnect the two things, so I decided that I would make this truck for him, in memory of him. As soon as the execution had taken place, we made a death mask of his face. Eight days later, this death mask had been placed on the top of the Tiki love truck. And we went through the streets of Manchester with like 45,000 people cheering. With craftivism, if I was to stand with a table with my leaflets and try and engage people about death row, you don't really change people's minds. But when people come up to my truck, the first thing they'd say is, how much does it weigh? And then they'll say, what's that face? And I'll be able to tell that story. Most of my work is focused on history from below. It's the people's history. I'm trying to dig out stories and trying to convey them because I'm a big believer in if we can listen to each other's stories and we remember how we got our rights, I think that it will be a much healthier society. If I'm honest, I'm really, really um, lucky. That's why I work within a collective. They helped me mosaic the house. I didn't mosaic that truck alone. That was a team of people who came to help me. And I think that's what happens when you become an activist. It means lots of other people can come and help and, and there's an energy that's created that's wonderful. Everything is about action, especially on the street. Find your creative voice and use it. As soon as you will, you'll feel so much better in so many other ways. I'm Carrie Reichardt. I'm an artist and craftivist and I live in London.